say, now let's all try to do one, and go around and answer questions, and then I would say, okay, so for the rest of the period, we're working on our, you know, our continuing composition project, get in your small groups and get going. If today's you know, exercise helps you in some way, that's great, but you don't have to use it. But I could take sort of 20 minutes every day and just show them some different techniques that they weren't familiar with. We might listen to some music, we might you know, look at it in a very um, technical, notated way. Uh, there are lots of different ways to introduce things, but, but sometimes we would just sort of take that and go, A2, we're doing a study of a compositional technique. But then their compositions were very much up to them, and they could use tools that we shared, they could use other things, they could come to me and say, I'm stuck, I need, Okay, so, so there is sort of a, a balance of freedom and constraint here, and sometimes the constraints are, are sort of the little shell of the nest of comfort, <laughs> and then you try to balance it with giving them some freedom in other, other ways. Does that help? Yeah. It's, a tr it's a very, very different thing. Teaching composition is so different from teaching anything else we do in music, and the main way that it's different is that you don't know what the end is. Okay? And that's very hard for music teachers. We are control freaks by nature. Ready? Go ahead. I'll sit there and go either absolutely yes or sit there in denial. But in either way, <laughs> we're sort of control freaks. You walk in, you have a score, you have the song for the day, right? You have a sense of what that will sound like at the end. When you walk in to do composition, you kind of lay out some general parameters or guidelines. And you say, get started. Raise your hand when you need me. And then you run like a crazy person while they all need you. Um, but you don't know what the products are going to be. Um, and that's really hard for a lot of teachers. And what I would encourage you, if you're thinking, oh, I don't know, I would encourage you to try it and let the kids surprise you. Because they will come up with things where you just go, oh my god, really? That is unbelievable. And the thing is, when you get that piece in a room where the kid is, you know, or a small group has created that kind of thing, the rest of the room recognizes it. And then on your next project, four out of five groups will do that thing, <laughs> right? Which is part of the social learning environment that you, you kind of invite into that space, is that they can hear what other composers have done and then sort of borrow it and put their own spin on it, and that's how they grow. That kind of, um, it's sort of like telephone, the telephone game with composition. We heard this, we did this, we changed it up a little bit. <laughs> right. So, um, I don't know. Does this kind of help us think about? Okay. So, I think we'll try something then. Try this for a second. Just try it. You don't have to embrace it and love it forever. But see if you can just think through this for yourself. Or if you feel alone in this process, feel free to invite a neighbor to play with you. See if you can come up with just some kind of feeling word or description of a, a musical feeling that you've had. Is there, um, can you identify the bodily correlate? Motion stasis, unity and variety, sound silence, tension and release, stability and instability. Is there one of those things that kind of plays into that feeling? And then if you had to make music <coughs> that sounded like that feeling feels, what tools or techniques would you use? What instruments might you choose? What kind of musical gesture might you put into play? Just take a couple minutes and kind of ruminate. <coughs> Feel free to talk amongst yourselves. 